Polya. I passed you on the street And my heart fell at your feet I can't help it if I'm still in love with you He said, Larry, I'd like to come back here to Lubbock sometime. I don't like New York, but that's where you got to go to make it. He said, I'd like to start a studio here. He picked out a lot and paid down on it. I can show you where that lot's at. It's on 21st in Vicksburg, I believe, uh, Frankfurt, let's see, you have to be Vicksburg. Uh, and he had Don Kittrell, the architect, draw it up the house play. I've got lots of memories about him. It would be hard to say which would be the best. But I remember most about him was his sense of humor and his laughter. He could laugh like just a gut busting laugh, you know, when he is tickled or thrilled about something. And he was a happy boy. You know. Larry, if I had a thousand dollars, I could get me a better guitar and some good clothes and go to Nashville, and I believe I could make it. Mm -hmm. I said, buddy, you might as well ask for the moon. It's a thousand dollars. That was a lot of money then. It'd be about like 10,000 now. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I raked it up for him. Mother and daddy didn't have any money. And uh, he bought a $600 guitar, <laughs> Fender Strat, and then some sh some clothes. Uh, he had a chartreuse jacket and red shoes uh, that was suede and just stuff like that. And I thought, man, you blew it. <laughs> <laughs> they went off to Nashville. Of course, when they came into Nashville, that's a country place, and they didn't hit it off there. We. We was getting hungry and early to San Angelo, a little joint outside town, and they had hamburgers and they also had a band. It was black combo playing, and Buddy got real interested, but there wasn't anybody in there listening to him hardly. It was just me and Buddy. And Buddy walked up there and got to talking to him and said, Hey, cats, how you doing? You know, he could talk, he could talk like a musician to him, and them guys, they knew that he was a musician the way he talked. They said, would you like to, would you play? He said, yeah. They said, would you like to play a song? He said, don't mind if I do, and reached over and got it. <laughs> it sounded like a different instrument whenever he got his hands on it. And he played that song, Sexy Ways. I never had heard him do it. And they wouldn't let him quit. He just kept on playing different songs. And when he came back and sat down, I said, buddy, I didn't know you could do that. He said, yeah, I've been learning a little bit. I tell you what, it liked to kill me when he got killed. Uh, I wouldn't even listen to his music for about a year. Yeah. And I just couldn't listen to two songs at a time. I'd have to get out of the room. I had him working for me, and he was real blue one day. He was working out the city county health unit, and he was just as blue as he could be. And I said, what's the matter, buddy? You're not making a good hand today. He said, oh, Larry, I tell you, if I just had a little help from somebody, I said, well, what about them, them two songs we, you did for Norman Petty over there a month ago? He said, well, Norman went off on a trip somewhere, and I can't find out anything. I said, well, who did he take them to? And he said, Maury Dutch up there in New York. And I said, well, you got his phone number? He said, yeah, I think so. I said, let's put up the tools and go to Mother's house and call that gentleman and see if we can't find out something. And when we called him, he said, is this Buddy Holly? And, and Buddy said, yes, sir. He said, have you heard the good news? And he said, no. He said, well, they're playing your song on the streets and people are dancing to it. Uh, well, he had, a, he had some contact lens for a little while and one day, he, on stage, he dropped one out, and everybody, him you know, and the crickets was looking around for it. And he said, I'm going to give me some glasses. And, and it sort of made a trademark, you know. I felt like I could have kept him out of that airplane because I was a pilot myself. And uh, it was bad night. Too bad. You, you take four warm bodies, get into a little 
Beechcraft Bonanza uh, on 10 degrees below zero. It's going to steam up in there. And it did. And he was taking off and it put in his ferry gyroscope a few days before that. And this young pilot had been used to a, a regular gyroscope, yes, artificial horizon. And they worked just backwards. If you got to get used to each one of them. And I'm sure that he was sort of awed by who he was carrying, you know. And he was just 21 years old, good pilot. Right. But he, was, he couldn't see the ground. It wasn't in a snowstorm, but there was snow on the ground. And uh, the, the man up there that rented him, the, uh, at least the plane, said, on a night like that, you can see every farmhouse on the ground. And he saw their light going off. And then where these boats should have been turning right and climbing towards Fargo from Mason City, they was going down and turning left. Just the opposite. And I know even the Civil Air Patrol, Civil Air Aeronautic Board, didn't even think of what I've come up with. But my be, me being a pilot mm -hmm. and seeing how it fogs up in there sometimes when you get four bodies, even in Lubbock area, in the winter. <coughs> I was working on a tire job over in the, pretty close to Larry's house, and I went home for lunch. And I uh, went in the house, and my wife said, you better change your clothes and get over to your mother's house. We heard that your brother Buddy got killed in a plane crash. On the radio, she heard it. And so... And I didn't know about it. That's the first I heard. And I was out checking my jobs, and I went by Travis's job, and I saw his tools there, and he was gone. I thought, well, Travis goes early every time to eat. And, you know, I sort of aggravated. Uh, but anyway, uh, I went up to Pansy's Cafe, a little cafe that was by the railroad track where Fuddruckers was for so long. And, Pansy's, uh, you say? Pansy's Cafe. And Pansy knew me. She run the place. and She said, that was bad about them boys, wasn't it? I said, what do you mean? She said, isn't your name Holly? And I said, yeah. She said, well, you better get on the phone and call your folks. And I knew something bad had happened. But all the way to Mother's house, I, I tried to call the preacher, I tried to call everybody that knew that phone was busy, couldn't get them. All the way to Mother's house, I thought, if he's still alive, I'm gonna go up there and get him and I save him. And I, I had always been his mentor, and he looked to me for everything he needed. And I felt so helpless when I found out he was dead, you know. Uh, it really, it, it tore me up. And I, I, I never have completely got over it. That's the reason I don't play his songs. Some of the radio stations found out about it before Mother and Daddy did. But I never did get to talk to anybody on the phone. And I went over there, and the preacher was over there, and Mother and Daddy was in hysterics, and especially Mother. That was a tough time, I tell you. For just a while, now you're putting on a smile, and you never want to smile. And you're home across the track. You're the gossip of the and my heart can still be found Where you dropped it on the line Pick me up on your way down Pick me up on your way down When you're blue and all alone When that glamour starts to pour Come on back where you belong You may be their pride and joy But they'll find another and they'll take away your friend. Pick me up on the 